let's say we have 5 plus 6j. And I want to change it to polar. Uh-oh. I don't have my protractor here. It's all right. I'll explain what I'm trying to do here. Then we can do it mathematically, graphically. What's that vector looks like? 5 plus 6j. You go 5 to the right and 6 up, right? Let's go 5 to the right. That puts me right here. And let's go 6 up. That puts me right here. This is the vector. So this is the 5. If you make your triangle, this is the 5, and that's the 6j. This is the 5, and this is the 6j. 5 plus 6j gives you that vector. What is the value of this length, and what's this angle? That's called the polar coordinates. Remember that from vectors, vector addition? So I want to change that to our angle theta. Now, to me, it looks like R for this example, just looking at my scale, will be about 7.7, 7.8, somewhere there. But how do you find what R is? Think of trig. Think of Pythagorean theorem. What is R equal to? That's the polar, by the way. This notation is known as polar notation, polar form. This notation is known as rectangular form. How do we go from rectangular from x and y to r and theta? Going back to vectors, r should be Pythagorean's theorem, the square root of the x value, which is in this case the real portion squared plus the imaginary portion squared. It's this value squared, that value squared. So r is going to be the square root of the 5 squared plus the 6, not 6j, just the 6. The imaginary portion, the j just told you that's the imaginary. So it's 6 squared. 25 plus 36, which is what? Is that 61? Now I said on my scale here, on my ruler here, it says somewhere around 7.7, 7.8. Let's see what my calculus said the answer to that is. The square root of 61. 7.8. And theta, I don't have a protractor. I wish I left one here. I could measure that angle and tell you what theta is. Since I don't have my protractor, it's the inverse tangent, the side that's opposite. Well, which side is the opposite? It's the imaginary over the real. Opposite over adjacent. The opposite here is 6 and the image I mean the adjacent is 5 so what's the inverse tangent of 6 over 5 that's 1.2 second tangent 1.2 probably a little bit over 45 degree maybe 50 50.2 So we can change this from rectangular to polar by saying 5 plus 6j, it's really equal to 7.81 angle 50.2 degrees.
So you can go back and forth between polar and rectangular. So here's what we know. I'm, I'm going to make that a rule for you. If you have rectangular, and you want to switch it to a polar, rectangular will be A plus JB. Polar, when you change it, is going to say R angle theta. How do you find R? R is the square root of A squared plus B squared. And theta is the inverse tangent of the imaginary, which is B, over the real. Keep in mind, there we go, add 180 degrees, because the calculator will be wrong, if A is less than zero. Why? Because that means you're in the second or third quadrant. Remember that, if you're in the second, third, we have to add 180? That's why. To go from polar to rectangular, the reverse. You know R and theta, and you want to change that to A plus JB. A is the X value, B is the Y value in vectors. The X value is always what? R cosine theta and the imaginary B, which is the Y value, that's R sine theta. That's how we go back and forth between them. So I'll do some examples to go back and forth and I'll show you the advantage while we're looking at it. Then we're done with Tech Math 1. That's it. Let's say I have, okay, here we go. I have three angle 40 and I want to change it to a rectangular. This is polar. That will be 3 cosine 40, that's A. The cosine is always the A. And the B or the imaginary is the sine, 3 sine of 40. Three cosine 40 degrees. 2.3, 3 sine of 40, 1.9 plus 1.9j. .9 14 angle 306. Now I want to change it to rectangular. That's 14 cosine 306 plus 14 sine 306, and that's the imaginary portion, J. <coughs> 14 cosine 306 equals 8.2.
14 sine 306 negative instead of plus that's a negative now where's my negative nope there we go negative 11.3 J Let's work it backward. Negative 1.5 minus 2.6J. I want to change it to polar. I need to find R, which is the square root of the real portion squared plus the imaginary portion squared. Notice I don't put a J. And I get 3 even, 3.0. And theta is the inverse tangent of the imaginary, that's negative 2.6 over the real, which is negative 1.5. But since A is negative, I need to add 180 degrees to the answer. Otherwise, my calculator is wrong. Second tangent, 2.6 divided by 1.5. It says 60. I know both are negative. It can't be 60. So that's why you add the 180, because that means the third quadrant. It is 240 degrees. So that will be what? 3.0 angle 240 degrees. Well, we might be in trouble just a little bit there. Let's try some of these special cases. What about if I gave you just five? No imaginary. I says write that in polar. Now you gotta think about the graph. Where is that five? Which axis? On the positive x axis. The length of it is five, but what's the angle? That's five angle zero. It's right on the x-axis. If I go negative 5, where's the negative 5? Again, there's my axis. This is the real and imaginary. The negative 5 is down on this line, somewhere here. So the length of that is going to be 5, but what's the angle? 180, you always measure the angle from this line. What about 7J? Seven 7J seven is going to land where? On this axis. What's the length of it? The length, not the value of the angle. The angle is 90, you're right, but how long? It's 7, what's the angle? 90 degrees. So if you only have whole numbers or imaginary value, not a complex, not a full one, it's not like 
two plus three J. If it's like something like this, that's how we do it. But you can apply that here. You gotta use your knowledge there. And if it was negative four J, for example, negative four J, that's the length is four. That's the value of it. Well, which direction? Where is the negative J? Negative 90 degrees or plus 270. It's way down. So it's negative 90 or plus 270. Now the book doesn't really tell us what the advantage, why we need to switch to polar, or what's the big deal about it. It is, if you were multiplying or dividing, polar is much, much easier to multiply and divide than rectangular. And fortunately here, we don't cover that. But that's really the reason why you wanna to switch to polar. When you're multiplying and dividing, it is 10 times quicker, I only said 10, but much easier and quicker to divide and multiply in polar. To add and subtract, you always want to add and subtract in rectangular. You can't add and subtract in polar. So you have to learn to switch back and forth between them. So with, with this in mind, 